Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this ink, which comes in a package that suggests it is the Holy Grail. Gloria Patris et Filio. But in fact, it is only Visconti purple and nothing else. One of the nice things about this packaging is that you can just take this off, and whenever you feel like, you know, having a dram on the road, you can just take it out, fill it up with a shot of whiskey, and just, you know, drink it away. Now, it's interesting, and in fact, I like this a lot, and I'll come back to that, because the bottle is fascinating, but don't be fooled, this is not glass. It's just plastic. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, we've got a lot of glass bottles out there. I love the shape, but when you're inking up a pen, I always use two hands. I'm not, I'm not sure about you, but whether it's a piston filler or, or uh, a, 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 a converter that you, you twist, usually I need two hands, one to hold the, the pen or the converter, and one to do the twisting motion. This bottle, make sure it's closed, I mean, this is just, this is extremely shaky. It has this quite narrow foot, and then it's, it's very large and bulky. I love the design, I think it's very pretty, but man, is it rickety. So, what I always do when I ink up the pen is I take the shot glass, take the shot glass, put the bottle in, which is very easy. No, it, is, it is, in fact, it is very easy. You just put it in, open it up. Now, of course, I can't do it because I closed it up too tightly. There you go. Cap is off. This cannot fall over. I mean, I'm going to put that in my hand again. If this falls, there's going to be a lot of ink all over me, but this is a lot more stable than that little narrow foot. Um, and you can just dip your pen in, then, you know, there's no risk of it actually tipping, because I am sure, with my motor skills, this thing is going to tip over if I don't do this. So, kudos to Visconti for including the shot glass. Um, and, of course, the little pedestal to, to make this thing look even more holy. But even if it's on there, I mean, it's still it'll still tilt. It's not... Okay, enough about the bottle. Um, this is Visconti Purple. This is one of the three Visconti inks I own. Uh, I also own Black, which is... I don't like it particularly much because it's a more of a grey, a dark grey, especially in broad nibs. In fine nibs it's okay, and it's black. Um, if you use that for calligraphy, you'll just get a, a, a dark grey. I have a, a sample of Visconti Sepia, which Eric sent me. I think I've already covered that in the encyclopedia. And today I thought we'd do this one. I got this when I bought my uh, Homo Sapiens fountain pen at some point. This, this came along with the pen. I think it's a very interesting purple. It's definitely purple. This cannot be mistaken for any other color, which I like. Uh, it's quite vibrant. It's quite intense. It's on the dark side. Uh, but I... I I, I like it. I think it's very nice. It has pretty good flow. I thought it was a little dry at first, but I think that was because the uh, Homo sapiens I put it in had some minor flow issues at the time. I've worked a little bit on the tines now, and now it works fine. And all the pens I put this ink in for this uh, encyclopedia entry, flow was excellent. So I think that's, that's going to be just fine. Um, I think it's time for some purple rain. So let's do writing sample. All right, my friends, today I have for you Visconti Purple. Let's start with some fine writing. Not some fine writing, but some fine writing. That's a big difference. The quick brown fox was wet with purple rain. This is a, a weird bit of lettering, but you, I'm, I'm sure you'll understand what it says.
That was medium. Let's go to broad. Now that is nibbage. Forgot myself for a second there. Over the P ring. And italic fun. The pea rain sounds like some typical animal. Pea rain. It's small, it's short, it's hairy, it's scary, it's the pea rain animal. All right, so what are we what have we got so far? A nice purple, I would say, undeniably purple. I cannot. Whoops, sorry. I just hit the uh, tripod that's resting on my desk. Um, you, you cannot mistake this for any other color than purple. I would say. You see that especially with the wetter nibs, uh, you you get a really nice, quite intense purple with some shading. Um, it's not a very light ink, so I'm not sure how well you can actually see the shading, but it's 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 there. Um, I think it's it's pretty nice. I seem to remember this as a fairly dry ink. Now that I see this, I think, hmm, not that bad. Let's do a triple torture test. Whoops. Sorry. Come back to more passes in a second. Let's try to do some flexi writing. Notice the railroading. I'm getting the feeling that this is a rhodia effect. Because the pen seems to work perfectly well on cheap paper. This is a new flex pen, uh, which I have cleaned well. I've gone through all the motions, but they keep railroading. I just squeeze some extra ink into the feed. Even then, it's just uh, annoying. That's better. Uh, was it my abuse of the pen holding it the wrong angle? Possibly. No. Oh well. So there we have it. Let's try to squeeze some more. Whoops. All my pens are on an, an, a cloth, and I just pulled the cloth, so everything was launched. No terrible harm done. Let's try to squeeze some line variation out of this medium nib. Considerably more complex, as it's quite hard. From hard nibs we go to smooth, wet nibs. I'm trying not to imagine anything there. Lovely nib this. I really love it. Very, very juicy. Okay. And then an italic. Well, before we do that... That's pretty dry. Let's make a second pass. One, two. I'll come back to those in a second. 
uh, I'm still uh, suffering from a cold, so if I'm sniffing every now and then, just bear with me. Metallic. Maybe we should have us some large writing. Now what shall I make of this? P for purple. And a little bit of regular writing with a medium nib. Also, I discussed this with Dan yesterday. In homage to Mr. Nathan Tardiv founder of Noodlers. I think we should do the Tardif test, which means you just take a flake knife, you dip it in the ink. I'm not sure how easy this is going to be, because this is a quite narrow bottle, I can't really get my knife in. My knife is too big, I uh, hear that quite a lot. Um, and we just smear it. Ah, oh, what a disappointment. Oh, terrible. Well, there we go. This is going to get easier if I get other inks with bottles that have a wider opening so that my knife actually fits in. There we have it, the Tardif test. And I think that bit is dry, so let's just do our third pass here, then return to the things I've just done. Let me just close that knife before I actually grab it and cut some main artery. Um, that kind of would be my style, you see. What do we got here? I got one of those uh, large 4.5 ounce noodles bottles with a built-in eyedropper. I just filled it with water. I thought that would be interesting for these tests. So now I can just drip some water on here. Drip, drip, drip. Goes the water. There we go. And then, of course, I have my little brush. Let's take the brush and go through the writing. Now we have two water tests. So we have just dripping of a lot of water on there, and we have just a brush and, and sort of wiping through the, the, the writing over there. And then we have the Tardif test. I'm not really sure what we can conclude from this. Uh, well, it's a very relevant uh, uh, thing right there. Uh, it's only a dollar or something. Um, but I d I'm not really sure what we can conclude from this. And um, what I, I do enjoy is the fact that this gives you a really nice overview of the shading of the ink. Uh, so I, I enjoy the Tardif test, even though I'm not entirely sure of its purpose yet. Okay, um, let us... Remove some of the excess water with some blotting paper. Uh, that's going to take a long time. Just going to grab a towel there. There we go. Well, that's not that bad, is it? I mean, you can still sort of see the outline of the P. The regular writing suffered. Uh, although it is still, well, more or less legible. So it's not extremely waterproof, but I've seen worse inks. So I don't think it's that bad. Let's start with our scorecard, and then return to the ink... The, the, the triple pass torture test. Scorecard. K. 
cleaning. Well, that's good. I don't remember having any problems with that. Um, I'm just redecorating a bit here. There we go. Whoops. All kinds of stuff collapses here, but I'm done. Sorry. I couldn't move my notepad up all the way. Bleed through. Well, we're going to have to see. Collar. Well, I'd say purple. Shading. I'd say that is okay to good. Then we have flow. Flow is good. Uh, I thought, as I said, I thought it was a little dry. Now I'd say it's good. Let's try that in cheap copy of paper in a second. Drying time is. Um, I, I I think I have to use some cheap paper for that because it seemed to be quite wet here. Although I have seen inks that took longer, so waterproofness. Okay at best. The best B E S T Feathering. Uh, I have to check that out in cheaper paper too. Now one thing that I promised you I would do uh, from this point onwards is to make a comparison between uh, well at least one this ink and at least one other ink that that struck me as being somewhat similar and today just to make sure what I have here is um, the, the Visconti purple we've been looking at up till now the reason I use my fine nib for that is that I've inked up another pen which happens to be an Ahab which also has this fine nib um, and it doesn't write There we go. Fine. Well, look at that. This is Gerbin. Violet. Is that Violet or Violet? Yes, Violet. The pronunciation really isn't different, but... Pense. Pense, of course. Violet Pense versus Visconti Purple. Well, well, well. What have we here? Hubba hubba hubba! That looks like the same ink to me. Maybe the Violet Pensee is just a little bit darker, but in all honesty, I think the two are extremely closely related and may have been twins that were separated at birth. Of course, now the Ahab doesn't write anymore. Ah, oh, there we go. In the future, I intend to keep using the Ahab to um, do these comparison demonstrations because I, I, I mean, the, the flex nib is useful because it allows me to show you broader nib lines and uh, finer nib lines in one pen. I mean, you have to realize that after shooting this video, I'll have to clean six pens. So I, I, I do, I love doing this, but I do actually, I don't want to clean 100 pens just for this. Um, so I think this one pen gives us a very good option. Okay, let's go to some... Here, yeah, come on. Let's go to some cheap copier paper. Copier paper, here we go. Copier paper. Fine. Let's start. Purple rain, though. Purple rain, amigo.
purple rain, mate. Paarse regen, vriend. Something big. Here you see why it's not a good idea to write in cursive with a 6mm nib. That's only going to bring suffering, but you can try. Um, maybe some flex writing. Let's just squeeze in some extra ink to the, into the feed. Uh, the ink has now ended up on my desk in a large drop. I have to do some emergency blotting there. And we're good to go. Do you notice that this pen, even though I have just loaded some extra ink into the feed, seems to be keeping up better on this cheap paper than on the Rhodia? I really think that is one of the issues. I think the Rhodia is too smooth. It doesn't provide purchase for the pen, and then for some reason it... It railroads here, but it would have railroaded a lot sooner on the Rhodia, I think. Just so you know. Okay, well, let's have a look at... Add at the bleed through. I wouldn't say it's too bad. It's definitely there. But it's mainly there. This is 6mm nib writing. This is flex writing. There's just some very minor bits of bleed through here and there. Uh, maybe a little more than I would expect because this is fine. Sorry, this is fine writing, medium writing. It's not extremely pronounced, but it's there. Um, on the Rhodia, bleed through is pretty much absent. This was flex writing. Uh, this was, I think, the Tardif test. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly that's that's, you know, I think it's not that bad, uh, but it is present even in a fine nib on cheap copy of paper. So I'm going to say bleed through is okay to good. Depends a little on the paper you're using. Feathering. Well, on this paper, I don't see any feathering. And on this paper, I don't see a whole lot of feathering either. Uh, maybe just a little bit here and there. But, I mean, this is a 6mm nib. I don't see any feathering. Uh, maybe a little bit with the flex writing. But I have seen inks that were much worse. So, for now, I would say feathering is good. Drying time on this paper was very fast. So, I would say drying time is good. Clearly that depends on the paper. I, I'm sure I don't have to say that every time, but I'll just point that out once more. So, here we have it. Visconti Purple Ink Encyclopedia entry. I hope this was useful. Um, and um, that's all there is to it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.